coming up easy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. And today we're going to be making bath bombs and showing you guys how you can make them at home. Um, first, you need some ingredients. There's only five ingredients in this. You need some ground up oatmeal. You need some baking soda. You need some citric acid. And I use these little bags of citric acid because they're already measured out for you in half a cup increments. And you need some salt and coconut oil. Pretty basic. And then you need whatever scent of oil that you want. Like the essential oils. And food coloring, which I recommend to get the vegetable food coloring because it's all natural and it will not dye your skin. And you're less likely to have an allergic reaction. And then... We are going to add some sprinkles of Spr glitter into Not sprinkles, ours. it's glitter. Sprinkle glitters. First, we are going to start out with oatmeal. And you need one fourth cup of ground up, fine chopped oatmeal. And one cup of baking soda. This is Tree's first bath bomb experience. Yes, I'm learning as well as let's you just guys hope are we too. do not blow up the kitchen. Okay, so one cup of baking soda, one half cup, which is four ounces, which is only measured out for oh. you. Which, you can get these at, where can you get these at? Um, if you live in Cincinnati. Now, this ingredients, where do you get these now, if bake, This, I get from Jungle Gems. If you live in Cincinnati. The normal b bottles of citric acid is going up because everyone is making their own bath bombs. Um, and they've become so popular that citric acid for a bottle can cost you anywhere from five to ten dollars, and which will only make you maybe two or three batches of bath bombs. If you buy these in the packets, they're $1.29 at Jungle Gems, and you only use like maybe one pack to two packs, depending on the recipe that you're using for your bath bombs. And you know, if you're making bath bombs on a budget, this Butcher Boy coconut oil they have at the dollar store. Toaster. Yeah. They have at the dollar store. They have Epsom salt at the dollar store. They have little, little smaller packets of this baking soda at the dollar store. And then um, rubbing alcohol if you want to spray your bath bombs if they get too soft. So most of this you can get at the dollar store, and if you don't have enough money to get citrus, um, the essential oils and everything, the dollar store also has several um, scented salts that you can just add, and then you do not have to add the essential oil. And they also have little packs of glitter, too. Then we need one half cup. Of Epsom um, salt. Of salt. You can use sea salt. You can use Epsom salt. You can use kosher salt. Um, Do you recommend a certain one? Well, the Epsom salt is really good. You know, like they tell you to soak in Epsom athletes. salt for athletes and things like that. So if you have sore muscles in that, the Epsom salt will really help. It also helps if you have skin issues like psoriasis or eczema. Um, but once again, you can use any salt. Sea salt is very good as well. And then you need, now this is what mixes all of this ingredients in is your coconut oil. You don't really have to be exact, exact but 
if anything that you want to get close on is your oil because too much oil in your bath bombs will make them too soft and they will not dry properly and then and if they don't dry properly they also will not um, fizz in the bathtub right so we're going to stick this in the microwave for two oh. seconds and while we do Tori is going to add her glitter glitter and her coloring well and it, it looks like it's, it's going into clumps which it will until you add the oil in yeah. but um yeah, that's how much that's in okay yeah, so if it clumps, it's all good. It will be good once you get the oil in there. And now for the fun part, the glitterier. Look everyone, I don't know if you can see it, but look. So now we are going to add the oil and I'm going to pour it for Tori while she um, just kind of, no, you want to do this part with your hands. You just kind of massage the, the dry ingredients while you're pouring okay. the wet ingredients in. So start in. doing it now? Mm-hmm. Well, give me a little bit of room because this oil may be a little warm. Do I need to mix, like, go and touch the yeah. wet part? Bit of that and show them how it's... But it's like that sand. So, so when you take this, when you, this in your hand and you squeeze it if it stays together and doesn't break apart then that's good if it starts to break apart then you need to um kind of make sure that you have your oils all mixed in see how her fingerprints is in that that means that it's it's forming. So once you get it to that texture, it will start to dry out beyond that point. So you have to kind of work a little fast after this. And I'm gonna do the first one just because Tori's never done it before and show you. You take both of your sides and I am using the smaller metal ones. The metal ones seem to work better because they don't let the mixture stick. Where do you get those? To your fingers. You can get these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, um, even Walmart and places like that are starting to sell them now that they've become so popular. Um, and you want to put enough in there that when you squeeze it together there's not a bunch sticking to the sides. You want the metal rims to hit rim to rim and then what I do to get it to go away from the metal and come out easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> so, yes. As you can see, bath bombs can be sometimes a messy business. So here we, we will do this again. And this time I will make sure it does not slip out of my hand. And then you kind of, you... Get it to where there's no, nothing coming out, and then you shift it from side to side. And that makes the back bomb stick together, but it also loosens it from the metal so that it comes out. Looks, oh, it's so cute. Like a perfect. Voila! Bath bomb. <laughs>